Hello my friends, it's Eva Musby here. I'm preparing a talk on how carers, parents, avoid burnout and even thrive. So this is about wisdom and hope from the front line. I want to share with you one particular aspect of it and I dearly hope that it will help you as you support your child who has an eating disorder. I want to stress that we go through extremely hard times as our child is ill. We suffer terribly for the pain they're going through and also for the humongous efforts that are required of us as we support them. Nobody should tell us how we should feel or react to it. These are our own emotions and sometimes they're very difficult. If you are feeling terrified, angry, guilty, if you're crying all the time, you're entirely normal and most of us go through a lot of time with very difficult emotions and we really don't know what to do with them. Sometimes they take us really to our edge. People sometimes say, I'm, I'm cracking up, I can't bear it anymore. And so it may seem really strange that I'm talking about how carers can not only avoid burnout but also thrive. So I wanted to share with you the concept of the hero's journey. You probably relate to this from favorite stories, epic movies, which follow the formula of the hero's journey. It starts with the hero getting into some kind of trouble and dipping down in, uh, in, in misery because of this hardship that life has thrown at them. And so this person, this hero of the story, goes off on a quest, a journey, an adventure of some kind. And what's significant in this part of the story is that the quest is usually big. It's usually motivated by uh, great value, usually love. The quest goes pretty well initially, it's a really good adventure, but at some stage in the story they can't bear the hardships that are thrown at them by, by life or by adversity, some enemy, and they normally in a good story fall into an absolute pit of despair. There seems to be no way out, they are at their very worst, they want to give up, and they don't look heroic at all at this stage. They look intensely human with all the human vulnerabilities. Something happens as they are in the deepest of their despair. Something to do with acceptance and letting go. And resources come to them that they didn't know that they had. It can be a helper coming along, a kind or wise person or some bestowing of a magical, magical tool, special powers they get into all their courage and strength and wisdom and powers on the up and the up until the happy ending where most significantly everybody including themselves ends up better off than than they started so there is a growth there is a transformation we like stories of transformation if you need some sense of a, a bigger picture some sense of purpose that this is not just a horrible, horrible journey. While we're in the thick of it, it rarely feels like we are on a hero's journey. It just feels absolutely horrible and we really don't want it. And at the same time, there can be some mini such journeys as we go along, a kind of growing that happens to us. Or for some of us, it's an aha moment. Certainly from parents I speak to, from everything I see, once the awful times are over, once things get a bit easier, we really do see that we've changed and that we've grown in our ability to appreciate life and its goodness, to be kind, compassionate, to, to be patient, basically to be more the best of ourselves, more whole, more wise, have a lot more resilience and the ability to, to feel joy. Here is a quote that I've adapted from Richard Rohr. It says, sooner or later, life is going to lead into the belly of the beast. 
into a place we can't fix, control, explain or understand. A place beyond the edge of our own resources. That's where transformation happens, because there we are in the hands of our bigger, more resourceful self. So it's really because we are in the pit, we are beyond the edge of our resources, that new resources come to us, we develop better ones, and it can come internally or it can come from outside people. We all need the external help as well, and the hero usually has a companion or a wise person or a magical person along their side. The concept of the hero's journey can also be misused. You might think, well, my child is going through the hero's journey and of course so they are. They will come out wiser and stronger. I would hate you to think that the hero's journey is something that we must somehow engineer. In particular, I am pretty horrified that occasionally I hear that there's a plan to let them hit rock bottom in the hope that this will help them find motivation to get better. This is really not how eating disorders should be treated nowadays. We know that eating disorders don't resolve that way. And likewise for you, why hit rock bottom? Why not be open to the resources that are around you as you go along? The way this journey usually changes us is that we find some kind of meaning to it, a bigger understanding, a bigger picture. Otherwise, it's just too miserable. Why is this horrible stuff happening to me? Why is this awful stuff happening to my child? Life is just cruel. So along this journey, as Andrew Solomon does in this amazing, beautiful TED video, I really recommend it. He says, we call it finding meaning, but we might better call it forging meaning. So we're active in this, in making sense of our lives and making something beautiful of it. Viktor Frankl wrote Man's Search for Meaning after being incarcerated in a concentration camp. And he said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. So the reason I'm bringing to the fore these, these, these big ideas about transformation, about greater wisdom, about developing greater resilience, it is in the hope that it rings a bell for you at this moment, that you're searching for some kind of bigger meaning behind this, something to lift you out of the everyday misery. I know I was seeking this for myself a lot at the time. This concept is never a should or an ought to. You can't bully yourself into developing greater resources. The best you can do is be open to it. There's no ought to how our mood should be, how we cope. Misery and pain is misery and pain. It comes and goes. So complete freedom around all this, never any blame or shame. But maybe it's an interesting way to look at it. There are many more ways to give you comfort and help you develop resilience while still being extremely loving and caring for your child. To help get hope, feel stronger, feel nourished, feel, feel soothed during these very difficult times when we have it hard and we have it hard also because we know our children are suffering so much. I go through a big number of tools in my book in chapter 15. My name is Eva Musby. I produce resources for parents. So I hope this is helpful. Check out my YouTube, subscribe and check out my website where you will find links to absolutely everything. And you can subscribe to my news through my website as well. So I wish you all very well. Bye-bye.